Yeah, this is pre-cal academic October 27th. All right, kind of a glare. Sorry about the glare. Maybe, uh, Matt, you want to try turning off the middle switch? Uh, okay, that got rid of some of it. Uh, turn the middle. Uh, you want to turn the left off? Try turning the left off. All right. Um, is that bad? Is that is this bad lighting for you guys? Okay. All right. Cool. So we want to show that three is an upper bound of f of x equals two x cubed minus four x squared plus x minus two. What they mean here, what this means, they want to show that three is an upper bound for the zeros. So we basically want to show that there are no zeros of f of x that are greater than 3. There are no, we want to show that the, all the zeros, all the possible zeros of this polynomial, they cannot be greater than 3. Okay. Right. So what you do is you take, here's how we do these. So if they gave us whatever they give us here, I'm going to call this K. In general, we're, we're just going to divide poly, our polynomial by X minus K. So here, we're going to take our polynomial, we want to do F of X for X minus K equals 2x cubed minus 4x squared plus x minus 2 all over x minus 3. That's what we're going to do here, okay? Are we lost? I feel like I said that in a very vague way. Okay? So what we do is establish the upper bounds. We take the number they give us here, we do x minus it, and we divide the polynomial by that. Okay, does that make any sense? So you guys want to do this with synthetic division or long division? Alright. So let's do some, we, gotta, we actually, I think we actually have to do synthetic division. So we're going to do positive 3 up here in the crow's nest, then 2, negative 4, 1, negative 2. box, 2, and then 3 times 2 is 6, negative 4 plus 6 is 2, 3 times 2 is 6, 1 plus 6 is 7, 3 times 7 is 21, negative 2 plus 21 is 19. Okay, so that's just to review what we learned the other day. You should know how to do some bank division. Okay? All right? And here's what the book says. Okay? Here's what we're going to make note of. Okay? Notice that the k, the k they give us was 3. k equals 3 here. Okay. 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, So k is equal to 0 here. And, and every number here in this last line is non-negative, right? And yellow numbers are not negative. Okay? Because of this, I'm going to highlight this in green, because of what I wrote in green, this proof, this is the, our proof that 3 is an upper bound <coughs> for zeros of f of x. Okay. So we, we show this basically. So let's recap. Let's recap what we did. I feel like I went through that in a very vague way. So to 
recap, what we did was, so we wanted to show that 3 was an upper bound of f of x, okay? So what we did was our first step, we divided, right, so show, so the, pro the problem is, I'm trying to think about the best way to do this. The problem was show that, so three is an upper bound with zeros of f of x, okay? So the first thing we did was we divided f of x by x minus 3, okay, so we did f of x for x minus 3, you have to do that using synthetic division, so that was our first step here, right, okay, that was our first step, okay, and then we note two things, Noted two things. Three is greater than or equal to zero, and these yellow numbers here, the last and the bottom line, the bottom line of synthetic division. And the bottom number, I'll say the bottom numbers in the synthetic division are all non-negative. Make any sense what we just did? I feel like I just can, yeah. So I, don't, I didn't tell you why we did it, but I told you that we did it. So you guys see what we did? So we noted that three, that number they gave us, is greater than or equal to zero, and the bottom line numbers are all non-negative, so they're, none of them are negative. Those two things they prove that three is an upper bound for the zeros of this polynomial. We lost. Okay, cool. Okay. Because I was actually pretty confused by it five minutes ago. So I read the textbook. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Awesome. Where do you think this might come in handy? Where do you think it might come in handy? So if you get like a polynomial, right? Right. If I give you a polynomial, all right. I'm just gonna shoot it. No, I'm not gonna shoot it. Come on. Feel pressure. I can't do it. Right there. It's right there. I don't wanna hurt someone. I don't wanna set a bad example. All right, if I give you like f of x equals like, let's say like 12x to the fourth minus x cubed plus x minus seven, right? If I gave you this polynomial, I told you find, to find the zeros of it, first thing we always try is what? To find the zeros of a polynomial, we try doing what? We try to factor it first, right? Can we factor this? I don't think we can. If we could, I literally just like made this up on the spot, so. So then we try what? The possible rational roots theorem? We try, then we, we basically have to try guessing the zeros, right? Which stinks, right? We basically, you good, Michael? Okay. Okay, we basically just have to guess, right? Plus or minus one, plus or minus seven, right? The factors of the constant over the factors of the lead coefficient. Right? So possible rational roots, right? This theorem tells us that these are all the possible rational roots of this of this polynomial, but we still have to go through this really big list and just plug everything in and guess, right? That's really annoying, isn't it? So what this does, what this does, what this theorem does is if we can establish an upper bound that's lower than like some of our biggest possibilities, we can we can we can like narrow down this list. We can just cross off some of these values. That makes any sense, right? We show there's an upper bound. Any of my possible rational roots which are above the upper bound, we can just throw those out. We don't have to do as much guessing. Does that make any sense? I'm thinking that th that's where we want to use this theorem, okay? Okay, let's do the same thing, but for lower bounds, for lower bounds, okay? So there's two things. There's two things we got to show, we got to do. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to start by, we're going to do divide 
f of x over x minus k. In this case, it's 3x cubed minus x squared minus 5x minus 3. Right, over x minus, minus 4 or x plus 4. Okay, so we're going to do that division. And we're going to show, right, we're going to note that negative 4 is less than or equal to 0. And, and I'll show you this. So let's do the, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave a cliffhanger here. And dot, dot, dot. Okay, let's do the synthetic division. So negative 4 in my crow's nest. 3, negative 1, negative 5, negative 3. Negative 4 times negative 49, what is that, 196? That's 2 squared times 7 squared. Negative 4 times what? Negative, negative 4 times negative 49, what is that? 196? I think it's 196. Yeah, sorry. Yes, I did make a mistake. Thank you. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I was trying to figure out what I did wrong. Sorry. Thank you. So negative 4 times 13 is uh, 62, right? Or 52? Right, so we should all know how to do synthetic division by now. If you don't, please come to office hours or a resource or after school and I'll help you. Okay? So notice, notice that these numbers alternate. So we have a positive here, then we have a negative, then we have a positive, then we have another negative, right? So they alternate between positive and pink and, or sorry, positive and yellow and negative and pink. Okay, so we know that the number they gave us is less than or equal to zero. Negative four is less than or equal to zero, and bottom line, the bottom line of, of our synthetic division alternates between non-negative and non-positive. The yellow numbers are non-negative. The pink numbers are non-positive. What's the difference between saying non-negative and positive? What's the difference? Zero. Zero is a non-negative number, but it's uh, not a positive number. So if like this had been a zero, negative 13, zero, negative 19, that we'd still like be they'd still be good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you guys see, you guys follow me. So we showed, we did it. We did. We showed that negative four is a lower bound for the zeros of this polynomial by telling our teacher, okay, negative four is less than the number you just gave me is less than or equal to zero. That's for lower bounds. And then when, you, when we do synthetic division, the bottom line alternates between positive and negative. The bottom line alternates between non-negative and non-positive. So those two things. You just showed me that negative four is a lower bound for the zeros. Are we confused, Maggie? So, what's the answer? Um, it's it's a it's kind of like a proof. It's like a show me, you know. 
It's like, remember on the test when it was like, show that these two functions are inverses? There wasn't really an answer, it was just like a show me. Does that make any sense? I guess, I guess maybe the answer would be yes. I don't know. If I said, is negative 4 a lower bound of this polynomial, you'd say yes. For the zeros of the polynomial, I shouldn't, for the zeros. So this polynomial, this polynomial zeros cannot be any lower than negative 4. That's what this means. That's the takeaway. Does that make any sense? And we'd use this right, we'd use this to help us with the possible rational roots theorem, just to cross off some guesses so we don't have to do as much guessing and checking. Okay? You only get, what, 55 minutes on a pre-cal test, so. So that's the end of 2.4, I believe. Uh, 2.4 homework for tomorrow, okay? Let's do the 2.4 homework for tomorrow. Feel okay with that? You good? Yeah. All right. Cool. 2.5, this is a good problem. It's a good problem right here. Use the given zero to find the other zeros of the polynomial, right? How might we do that? Anyone have any idea? Uh, plug in two. Well, if we plug in two, it's just going to give us zero. How do we find the other zeros with it? All right, so we're basically... We're going to use the fact that this polynomial is, is, it has a 0 of positive 2 to help us factor it. Okay, we can't factor it the way it is. So, right, but, we, but by giving us a 0, they, they give us one of the factors. Yeah, so by giving us, they gave us this polynomial, we can't factor it, right? We can't just look at it and factor it. But because they told us that one of the zeros is, is 2, is positive 2, we know that one of the factors of our polynomial is x minus 2. So go ahead, we're going to divide this polynomial by x minus 2 and see what it gives us. Okay? So let's use synthetic division. So we do x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6. Right? We do divide it by x minus 2 and see what this equals, okay? So let's do the synthetic division over here. We got negative 2 in the crow's nest. Or no, it's positive 2, right? We got positive 2 in the crow's nest. So what's the result then? How do I interpret the last line of my synthetic division? What does that mean? What's the answer? What should I write right here? So I have 1x squared, right? 1x squared minus 4x plus 3, right? Okay. Are we lost up to this point, how I did that? OK, yeah. So what's the difference between like a question like that and like the ones where you actually have to like put the other number in front of the Because like that one just, it just gives you that key. Yeah, so the only difference is they like yeah, they already guessed one of the roots for it. That's a question. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'm so just we don't. To like figure out how to like and the other things like that. Uh, so we're uh, so it's synthetic division would be like. This would be our answer right here. They want us to go the extra mile and find the other zero. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're not done. No, we're not done, right? So we need to find the other zero. So what we do is, okay, if I multiply, if I take this equation, this is true, right? Because I did that division and showed it. If I take this equation, I multiply both sides by x minus 2. Get this. Plus a bit. Right? So I get x cubed minus 6x squared plus 11x minus 6 equals x squared minus 4x plus 3 times x minus 2. Okay? You guys see that? So I just, I wrote down the answer. To my, I wrote my division problem. I wrote the answer to my division problem that I got with my synthetic division. And then I just multiplied both sides by x minus 2. And then can I factor this quadratic here? Can I factor that? Yeah, I can. So that'll give me so x minus 2 on the right here. And that's a minus, minus 3 and 1. Okay? Now look, 
our polynomials factored all the way out. See that? Polynomials factored all the way out. Okay. So the first step here, see what um, whatever they give you here. First step was divide f of x by x minus two. Right, that was our first step. Right. Second step is like write out, write out like um, write out like that division problem and its results. Right. So we did we did the polynomial divided by x minus two. We wrote out that problem, and then we wrote out the result right here equals the results. And then we multiply both sides. So that gives us an equation. Multiply both sides. Equation by x minus 2. Okay. And then our fourth part, at that point, we had it right in this form. And we know how to factor that from algebra 1. So the fourth step is just finished. Finish factoring with algebra one knowledge. All right? Let's see how we did that. Confused what we just did. Okay. Um, let me look at the notes. Can you see how just like this in a second? So we did the second one the exact same way we just did the last one. It's just a little scarier, right? So we're going to divide. So we have x equals 1 plus i here, right? 1 plus i. Okay. So what are we going to divide f of x by? We're going to do f of x over what? Minus that, right? Minus whatever x is. So it's going to be x minus and then 1 plus i. Or which is the same thing as f of x over x minus 1 minus i. Um, actually, probably leave, leave it in that this point. Leave it in that same point we had, I'm sorry. Yeah. f of x over x minus 1 plus i, okay? So that equals x to the fourth. So we want to write out our division problem x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus x squared plus 6x minus 6 right, all over x minus 1 plus i. Okay. Are there uh, Because when you factor uh, a polynomial, the factors of your polynomials, like on the homework, that homework problem, are all of the form x minus something. So one of the factor of that polynomial that corresponds to the zero they gave us is going to be x minus that zero. Does that make any sense? Yeah. All right. And then so then we use our synthetic division, right, to actually do the problem. So put one plus i in the crow's nest. One negative two negative one six negative six. Right. One time, and so you do the synthetic division just like you would with a real number, right? So one plus i times times one is one plus i. That's negative two plus one plus i is going to be negative one plus i. Okay. okay. And then one plus i times negative one plus i. Let's do it over here. So one plus i times negative one plus i. Foil, so first outer, inner, and then 
Center last and then you cancel the negative one plus I squared is negative one, negative two, add the other negative three, okay, one plus I, one plus I times negative three down here is uh, negative three minus three I. Right, and then 6 plus negative 3 minus 3i three is 3 minus 3i. Three okay. And then 1 plus i times 3 minus 3i three is a foil. So first, outer, inner, last. So plus 3i squared. Oh, minus 3i squared. Sorry for that handwriting. These cancel. I get 3 minus 3i squared, which is the same thing as 3 plus 3, which is 6. All right? All right. Sorry, I wrote 6 in the wrong spot. 6. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Okay? All right, so I'm going to delete all this down here. Move all this out of the way. All right, so the answer to my division problem is going to be, uh, what is it? This is going to be a constant term. This is going to be our x term. This is going to be our x squared term. This is going to be our x cubed term. The answer is x cubed plus the negative 1 plus i x squared minus 3x plus 3 minus 3i. Three So then if I multiply both sides, so I've got, let me highlight this. So I take, I don't know. I'm going to take everything in green, this equation in, highlighted in green. I'm going to multiply both sides of it by my denominator. See how I got to the next line? I just multiplied both sides of my green equation by x minus 1 plus i. Okay, that's your fault. All right. So let's see where we got lost here. I think we all know where to start. So we want to divide f of x by 1 minus the part in orange, or x minus the part in orange. Where did we follow that? Okay, we followed that. And so we actually we wrote out the problem here, okay? We just, re we just wrote out f of x. All that. Yeah. Yeah. I think we should have had some more practice with some that division with complex numbers before like applying it like this. Um, but uh, so the numerator divided by the denominator. Okay, so you guys saw that part. Follow that. Okay, we're good. 
block there. Okay. And then we did this, and then we actually did the division. We actually did the synthetic division. Okay. And here is our result. So this is going to be our constant term. So constant. This term is going to be our x term, our x squared term, and our x cubed term. So we wrote out that polynomial over here. Okay. The following. That, we found out that part from the synthetic division. And then we multiplied both sides of this equation by x minus 1 plus i. So it's canceled over here. And we have all of this in brackets times x minus 1 plus i. Good? OK. It's a big, big problem to block going on here, OK? All right. Cool, good stuff. Did that. Uh, good, so we're to that step. And then this point will Well, I don't want to confuse you guys anymore. You guys have to be okay if I just move on from this one and ask Ms. Wine about it for a good way to teach you this. Sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So we'll skip C then. All right. This should be a little easier. This should be a little better. So we want to write out the polynomial function. All right, so we know it's zeros. First, let's write down all, the, all its zeros. Okay, so let's write down all the zeros. All right, so the zeros are 2, i, and then there's one more zero. You're going to have one more zero. So it might be, and I, I, I haven't told you guys this yet. So anytime, anytime you have an irrational zero or an imaginary zero, its conjugate is also a zero. So we have an imaginary zero of positive i. What's the conjugate of positive i? Zero. Negative i is the conjugate of it. So negative i will also be a zero. These are the three zeros. And what do we do in that homework? This is good, just like that homework problem, okay? We have f of x equals, and then we have three zeros, so three pairs of parentheses. Okay? Put an x at the beginning of each one. Right, put an x at the beginning of each one. Okay? And then we're going to put the opposite of each zero in here. So we're going to have negative 2, negative i, and positive i, okay? So we're going to have x minus 2, and x minus i, and x plus i, okay? All right, and then containing the point negative 1, comma 8. So what we've got to do is we've got to put an a here. We've got to put a variable there, an a. Yeah, now we're getting a little different from the homework. Okay. All right. So we've got to figure out what. So we did that. We plugged in all. We wrote, wrote down all the zeros. We wrote out the factored form of the polynomial. Back 
accurate form of the polynomial. Okay. Uh, you see we just did that just like we've done the homework, except we included a variable a right here. Right, so put, put an a in front of everything. Actually figure out what a is. The way we do that is kind of like what we did with um, our quadratics. So we have one, negative one, comma eight right here. Okay. So what we do is we just plug in eight for our y here, our f of x, and then we plug in negative one for all our x's, and then we can solve. We're gonna have one equation with one unknown that we can solve for uh, a. For a. We're gonna have eight equals a times negative 1 minus 2 times negative 1 minus i times negative 1 plus i, okay? All right, so you guys see what I did? No? Okay. Kind of guess the best. Slow. Okay, and now, now you guys see how we can solve this equation for a? We're just going to expand these three. We're going to multiply all this out, and then we'll have an equation that we can solve for a. So let's expand. So negative 1 minus i. So let's pull, pull that out. So first, 1 outer minus i inner plus i. Last, it'll be minus i squared. So these cancel. And then minus i squared is the same as plus 1. So it's minus negative 1, which is plus 1. Okay. So we're going to have 8 equals a times negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3 times uh, 2. Or 8 equals a times negative 6. Or a equals uh, negative 4 thirds. So that's our a right here that we can plug in. So we found our a. At this point, we know that f of x equals negative 4 thirds times x minus 2 times x minus i times x plus i. And we would be done here, except they told us to do what? Oh, wait, no, actually, we are done, sorry. I thought they told us to multiply it out, sorry. All right, I feel like that was a lot of new information. Okay. The, the problem just has a lot of parts. So we did it. We wrote down all the zeros, right? 2i, and then y was minus i a zero? Yeah, right? Because anytime I have a complex or an irrational zero, it's that number's constant is also a zero. Okay? So we wrote down all the zeros, and then we wrote, we did, we did this just like we did in the homework, except we put an a there. So we did x minus the opposite of 2, we did, so we did x and then negative 2, x and then plus the opposite of i, which is negative i, then x minus, or plus the opposite of negative i, which is positive i, okay, and then we plug in our point for y and x to solve for a to find our a, and then we just plug in our a and we're done. Okay, we feel okay about that? So we need to practice this for sure before the test, okay, so you're going to have to do this yourself on the test. Okay. Can we stop and ask questions here? Stop and ask questions. Yeah. It's a lot of new information, right? Did you at least follow me doing it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you can follow me doing it, um, but we just have to get you guys to the point where you can do it on your own. I feel like I don't know sometimes when to use, like, like, different things. Um, like, different forms of division or? Yeah. Uh, 
Thanks for your cooperation.